everybody, it's Magic Prepper. I just wanted to talk to you guys today about the Crossbreed Holster Company and why it's my choice for concealed carry applications. Uh, Crossbreed is an excellent company. They definitely put together a good product. Uh, they use the leather backing with the Kydex shell in order to make a hybrid style holster that makes carrying comfortable, makes it um, an easy part of your EDC to choose on a daily basis. And if you're going to carry a firearm all the time, you need something that's comfortable yet rigid and still safe. And Crossbreed delivers on all those aspects. Um, just so we're aware, I don't you know receive any kind of funding or sponsorship from Crossbreed, but I just wanted to share with you guys why I think it's one of the best holster brands to buy from and uh, my experience is working with the company in the past they have a lifetime warranty on their products which they honor very easily all you have to do is give them a call let them know what's going on with your product whether the kydex is cracked or the leather is deteriorating you'll send it back in they'll either repair it or send you a brand new one no questions asked i mean it's really simple um, a good company that stands behind their product is always uh, something that i appreciate and you know if you're going to carry a firearm you might as well use something that's going to um, last you a lifetime so you know Every day I put on a holster and a firearm one way or another and you know I generally end up with a crossbreed on my waistline. So today I'm carrying my SIG P320 in a crossbreed freedom carry holster right here with the premium horse hide. Awesome holster, I have no complaints about it at all. And if you're gonna uh, carry any kind of like a double stack or a significantly larger firearm that has a little bit more weight to it, then the Crossbreed Freedom Carry does a really good job of distributing the weight while not being too bulky at the same time. So um, I wanna show you the different Crossbreed holsters I currently own, kind of give you some uh, ideas about the company and different offerings that they have, and then uh, you know let you guys make your own decision on the holsters you wanna purchase, but I just figured this video might help you uh, make a decision uh, down the road. All right, so here's a closer view of the four crossbreed holsters I currently own. Um, all of them are super high quality. I really appreciate the craftsmanship behind all of them. And they have the same basic principle of being a hybrid style holster. And what that means is that there is a leather backer with a Kydex shell on top. So the leather makes the holster more comfortable to wear. Um, it pushes the leather against your skin, which makes it uh, mold to your body and be a little bit uh, more mobile for you when you're you know, doing your daily routines. And then the Kydex protects the firearm better. It also um, maintains the retention and gives you a little bit of protection for the trigger guard. So the hybrid style holsters are super popular now because they are generally the most comfortable way to conceal carry. Um, I have uh, three different models here. Two of them are the Freedom Carry model. Um, the Freedom Carry model is probably my favorite. This one is for the Sig P320. This one is for the Kimber Micro 9. Um, I like them a lot because they're minimalist. They have a single clip, which makes it really easy for kind of shifting them around on your belt or, you know, putting them on or taking them off. And at the same time, uh, there's not very much bulk. So when you're carrying this holster around, you don't feel like you have a giant leather pad on your back. Uh, the other holsters I have are the Appendix Carry right here, which is for the Smith Wesson J frame. Awesome appendix style carry holster. Um, the leather flap here really protects your stomach for when you're bending over or you have to crouch down to try to work on something. It doesn't let the uh, uh, the back of the uh, the firearm kind of you know crush into your stomach. And then the reckoning holster, which is one of their newest additions. What's nice about the reckoning holster is it's pretty much universal on what position you can carry it in. It can be a great appendix carry holster. It can also be in the usual four o'clock position. It also can be converted into an outside the waistband holster. So all you got to do is uh, switch around the clips you know get some additional hardware and suddenly you have an outside the waistband holster at your disposal so all of these holsters are wonderful uh the freedom carry is just you know my favorite because of uh you know it's ease of use and you know how often i carry it it just seems to do a really good job uh they offer three different leather options for your holster uh the black cowhide is kind of like their standard um it's a really nice soft leather um kind of thick but it comes out of the package ready to kind of wear it's already um, got a little bit of flexibility to it um but it is lesser than the premium horse hide in my opinion so the premium horse hide has the same rigidity but which with a much thinner profile so it's easier to conceal also the density of this leather um, makes it a little bit more resistant to moisture and your environment so if you're going to sweat all over your holster or maybe you live somewhere where it's very humid the horse hide is going to be worth the additional five dollars uh, to just make sure your holster lasts longer and eventually this horse hide kind of melts to your body like butter so um you know it just 
awesomely comfortable after you wear it for a while. Um, it takes a little bit more time to work in than the cowhide, but in the long run, I think it's a better option. They do offer something called the Founders Leather as well, which is leather that's imbued with like natural oils and has kind of more of a natural tanning look to it. Um, it's 10 more dollars, so I'm sure it's actually extremely nice, but I just currently don't own one with that um, leather option. So down the road when I buy another crossbreed holster, which I definitely plan on doing, I'll probably go ahead and get that option just to kind of check it out. So all the holsters are very effective in providing like safe retention. You know, when you're carrying daily, you never know what's going to happen. If you're going to take a fall or, you know, you're going to have to, you know, go upside down to work on your car. Who knows what's happening? You want to make sure your firearm is going to stay in the holster and stay safe. And all these holsters have done a good job of that for me. I haven't had any issues with feeling like the firearm is going to just pop out or fall out at any moment in time. Um, and that's extremely important when it comes to choosing an EDC holster. Um, you know, the cowhide and everything else is super soft. So if you want something that's going to be immediately comfortable to wear, go with that. Uh, but like I said, for the other reasons, Reasons, you, you probably want to get the horse hide um, and the horse hide does seem to offer a little bit better retention as well because that leather actually just molds right to the firearm just the same way as it molds to your body so definitely worth the um, uh, additional five dollars and I think you'll be extremely happy with it if you just go ahead and spend that money on it um, I do have some experience with their super tuck holster which is kind of their flagship holster it's the one that you know, got them where they're where they're at today. Um, it's your typical hybrid holster with two clips on it, so it's a little bit more of a purchase area. It's got more leather, which makes it bulkier. I used to carry a full size 1911 in that holster, as well as the Sig P320. But after I got used to carrying the Freedom holster and found out the different benefits of having something a little bit more minimal, um, I got rid of the Super Tuck and just kind of stuck with the smaller holsters you see here. Honestly. Um, I really just mainly carry the Freedom Carry at this point, but I do like the Reckoning quite a bit for the different modularities it has. So, you know, I feel like it's very important to always have at least a backup holster for your daily carry firearm. So might as well make it something that has a little bit uh, more to bring to the table so you can change it up if you need to for whatever application uh, you're going to use it for. If you are going to get the Super Tuck holster, however, you like the additional purchase, you like the additional retention and um, uh, rigidity that the two clips actually bring to the table, then go ahead and spend the extra $7.50 and get their combat cut. The combat cut just kind of makes a more aggressive cut um, where the grip of the firearm is going to be. Um, it makes it so, you know, it touches your body a little bit more, so maybe it's a little less comfortable, but it's also going to make sure that you can get a really good grip on the firearm when you have to draw, as well as making sure that the magazine release button doesn't get detented when you're um, uh, carrying you know if you push that leather on that magazine release too hard it is possible to you know let your magazine get loose and uh, that's the last thing you want to have happen in case you do need to draw your concealed carry firearm so just my suggestion if you are going to get the super tuck which by the way is a really good holster it's just not my favorite out of the different options i've tried from crossbreed um you know, I'll go ahead and uh, show you the way that these other holsters work. Um, I just want to kind of uh, show you the close-up view of them, and then we'll go ahead and, uh, uh, you know, put them on so you can kind of see the different ways that they conceal and the ways that, they, that they're that they worn. And then um, we'll go ahead and talk about, you know, just as the company uh, when it comes to, you know, their lifetime warranty and what they offer when it comes to customer service, you know, uh, to me is kind of what put them over the edge for uh, my personal uh, holster option versus going through some of the other bigger companies like Galco or Blackhawk or Bianchi or whoever it is you've worked with in the past. You know, I uh, uh, feel like Crossbreed's taken really good care of me as a customer, so um, we'll go over that information as well. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and show you the different holsters and um, how they're worn, you know, and how they uh, look when you have a firearm inside, just to give you guys an idea of um, what it is you might be looking at if you are thinking about purchasing one of these holsters. So currently I'm wearing my usual daily carry, which is the Sig P320 in the Crossbreed Freedom Carry holster. I've got it right here on my four o'clock. Um, pretty well concealed, hard to see, and it is very uh, safe and secure in here. Um, you can see that the firearm is uh, well covered, but still has tons of purchase on the grip. So if I do need to draw it quickly, um, it's not going to be an issue for me at all. Okay, so now we have the same holster, the Freedom Carry by Crossbreed, uh, but with the Kimber Micro 9. So uh, a little bit of a smaller pistol, single stack. Just wanted to kind of give you guys an idea of what one of your more micro style pistols are going to look like in the holster. So same position, 4 o'clock for this one. Got it right here. Obviously, you can barely see it at all. Uh, it doesn't have any kind of a print or anything in that nature, but still plenty of purchase on the grip for when you need to draw. Um, and 
very, very strong retention. I don't feel like this firearm is going to go anywhere. So uh, this one is the cowhide style, uh, just because I wanted to try something else out to see if I liked it better or not. Um, generally, like I said, I like the horse hide better, but this is still an excellent holster, and I have no complaints with it at all. Okay, so now we have the Appendix Carry Holster by Crossbreed uh, for my Smith & Wesson J-Frame. So um, it sits right here in the front, no problem at all. Easily concealable, can't see it at all. One of my favorite ways to carry, to be honest with you. And uh, it has great retention, and it has a little bit of mobility so that if you bend over or have to crouch, that the holster can move a little bit with you. As well as having this flap right here, which really makes it easier for when you bend over and your stomach pushes down on the holster and on top of the firearm. If you do have an exposed hammer, it's not going to stick you in the belly. And if you don't have an exposed hammer, it still just makes things a little bit more comfortable, and it protects your firearm from getting sweat and everything else on it. So uh, good retention, easy to draw. And, uh, you know, I think it's a really nice way to carry a Smith & Wesson J-Frame, just my opinion, though. All right, so now we have the Reckoning holster, which is one of the newest additions to the Crossbreed lineup. Uh, very cool holster, has the most modularity. You can move the position of the hooks a little bit easier. You can change the cant that way, and you can also uh, adjust the retention on the firearm a lot easier. So um, a lot of different options, as well as converting it to an outside the waistband holster. But obviously that's not really what I buy it for. So I do have it here in the appendix style. Can't see it very well at all. Uh, does a good job of maintaining the firearm and uh, easy to draw. You know, nice and easy. I can adjust the retention to be a little looser if I prefer, uh, which, you know, in this position I tend to because I want to make sure that the draw is uh, nice and on point. So um, very good holster and I think it's kind of a, a neat new addition to their lineup. Okay, so obviously Crossbreed makes a great product. And I did want to tell you that, you know, at one point I did have a, a Penix carry holster for my J-Frame that the Kydex snapped on. Um, it was just from years of use, bending over, crouching, pushing a lot of pressure on the Kydex, and eventually cracking the shell. I called Crossbreed, you know, let them know what happened. They immediately accepted the return and then sent me a brand new holster, no questions asked. So, honestly, their lifetime warranty is definitely worth having as part of the purchase of any of these holsters. Uh, they do a great job of you know working with you as a customer and making sure you get what you need. And if you have any questions or if you're not sure about fit or style of holster or what might work better for your situation, just give them a call because honestly, they'll talk to you on the phone as long as you need uh, to try to make the better decision. So, um, like I said before, none of this is paid advertising. I don't get sponsorship through Crossbreed. They don't send me free products or any of that kind of stuff. Um, I just wanted to share with you all what my favorite holsters are for concealed carry and, you know, give you some ideas about, you know, maybe which way you want to go when it comes to purchasing a holster versus having to go through that universally huge, you know, selection process where you can find yourself, you know, two days in and still not even know what kind of holster you want anymore. So um, if you have any questions about the company, you know, feel free to ask me down in the comments section. If you want to know anything about any of the particular holsters here or how I carry them, feel free to let me know and maybe I can do a follow-up quick response video for you. Um, I do appreciate you guys liking and sharing these videos um, as well as subscribing. So, you know, thank you so much. Hopefully we can keep this ball rolling and that's going to be it for Magic Crap.